Here I've got four of the best battery monitors for RVs, camper vans, and solar batteries. For the budget option, I've got the Ailey monitor, which sells for around $40 on Amazon. Then there's the Renogy monitor, which retails for around $100. And no, you're not imagining it, their shunts look identical. Next, we have the Victron Smart Shunt, which sells for around 130. And lastly, we have the Victron BMV 712, which retails for around $207. These monitors all work with 12 to 48 volt lithium and lead acid batteries, and you set up each monitor in pretty much the same way. Connect the shunt's battery terminal to your battery's negative terminal, then connect the shunt's included power cord to the battery's positive terminal. If the monitor has a screen, you then connect it to the shunt using the included cable, and then any loads and chargers get connected to the positive battery terminal and the shunt's remaining terminal. First, I connected the Ailey monitor to a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, and then discharged the battery at a rate of 20 amps while monitoring the Ailey's performance. You can, of course, see the battery's state of charge as a percentage, charging or discharging current, as well as the remaining capacity in amp hours, and then the battery voltage. And as far as settings go, you can set the battery's amp hour capacity, obviously, which goes up to 999 amp hours on this monitor. You can reset the state of charge to zero or 100%, and then you can set a zero capacity voltage set point, which is the voltage at which the battery capacity resets to zero, if it ever hits that voltage. I set it to 10 volts, which is around 0% on a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, but because my inverter cuts out at around 11 volts, it didn't come into play in my testing. The discharge test finished up as expected, and unlike the next monitor we'll look at, there is no alarm or anything to alert you when the battery's capacity starts running low. Next up, the Renogy monitor. I once again connected it to a fully charged battery, which I then started to discharge. Right away, you can see the benefits of the larger screen. You can see all the important specs at once, like capacity, current, voltage, and an estimated time remaining on the battery, which takes a second to calculate, but you'll see later on in this test. Uh, the time remaining is helpful if you're running a load that draws more or less a constant amount of power, such as lights or chargers. In addition to capacity and the zero capacity voltage, this monitor lets you set a full capacity voltage, which I think you can infer what that means at this point, and a power off voltage, at which point the monitor cuts off. This monitor also has an alarm that you can program if you want. You enter the capacity at which you want the alarm to go off, and then once it hits that level, it starts beeping and flashing to alert you that your battery is running low. There's also this very poorly explained battery attenuation ratio, which I reached out to Renogy to get some more insight on, and they said most batteries won't need to set that, so I pretty much ignored it entirely. The Smart Shunt doesn't have a screen, but it does have Bluetooth. So you download the free Victron Connect app, pair the Smart Shunt to your phone, and then your phone or tablet becomes your screen. The Victron app is honestly at first a little overwhelming because by comparison, there are so many settings you can adjust, most of which make no sense the first time you see them. I'm not going to get into all of them in this video because Victron has an entire manual which will help you get your monitor set up with the right settings for your battery. And there are a ton of YouTube videos helping you set up these monitors but it does have the basics and you can set the capacity as well as the state of charge. In this case, you can set it to whatever you want. It doesn't have to be zero or 100%. The Smart Shunt also has alarm features for low capacity as well as low voltage and high voltage. I put alarm here in quotes because rather than make a noise, the Smart Shunt simply displays a warning in the Victron app. There is no sound emitted by the Shunt and there are no push notifications that I got. In fact, the Victron app doesn't even have notifications, at least on iPhone. The only way you'd know that this alarm was going off is if you go into the Victron app and see the warning there, which didn't seem as helpful as the sound emitted by the Renogy monitor. And then we have the Victron BMV 712, which is expensive. <laughs> and for the price, you get the best of both worlds, which means you get a screen 
as well as Bluetooth. I just hate that you have to pay $200 in order to get both of those things. The settings are pretty much exactly the same as the smart shunts, though the BMB712 does have a couple extra features. And its alarm is an audible and visual alarm, which went off at the programmed capacity. And I also got the same low state of charge alert on the Victron app. I then tested how each monitor works during charging by charging the battery using a lithium battery charger and again using a 300 watt solar array. The charging rate was around 20 amps or 300 watts at its peak. The Renogy and Ailey monitors both visually indicate charging via a flashing screen. And with the Victron monitors, you actually have to look at the specs and see a positive current or power value to know that charging is happening. Otherwise, all of the monitors performed as expected during charging. To install the Ailey screen, you need a drill with a two and one eighth inch hole saw or slightly bigger and a pilot drill bit. Once your hole is drilled, you friction fit the screen inside. I tried fitting the screen in a two inch hole and it was definitely too small for that. To mount the shunt, you'll need double-sided mounting tape or a drill and some wood screws to mount it to a wall. Of course, you'll need a ratchet or wrench to loosen and tighten bolts. And for the Ailey, you will need a precision screwdriver to connect the shunt's positive power cord. The Renogy monitor is rectangular and it must be mounted with a friction fit as well. So for this one, you'll need a drill and drill bit to create a starter hole and then a jigsaw or a drywall saw to cut out the rectangle. Once again, the shunt can be mounted with tape or wood screws and you need a precision screwdriver for this one as well to unscrew the shunt's tiny terminals. The smart shunt is unlike other battery monitors in that it doesn't have a screen. So if you wanted, you could just use tape to mount the shunt to the battery or a nearby surface, or you can use a drill and wood screws to mount it to a wall. You don't need a precision screwdriver because the power cord just sticks right into a port on the shunt. It's worth mentioning at this point that mounting shunts to the battery presents a safety hazard. You can see how if I wasn't careful with my ratchet right here, metal could touch metal, thereby shorting the battery. A better mounting position would be off to the side to keep the negative and positive terminals a healthy distance from one another. And lastly, we have the BMV712. Its screen requires a two and one eighth inch hole saw or bigger. You feed it through and then screw on the back to hold it in place. Uh, this requires your hand to be behind the wall though, which isn't always possible. So Victron includes a mounting plate that you can use if you can't reach your hand behind the wall. And the mounting plate requires a drill, a small drill bit, and a precision Phillips head screwdriver. Victron also makes a wall mounted enclosure, which is a separate purchase if you can't drill a hole in your wall. Uh, the shunt can be mounted in the same ways as all the other shunts. I then tested the Bluetooth range for the Victron Smart Shunt and BMV712, which were the two monitors that had Bluetooth. First, I tested the uninterrupted Bluetooth range in a backyard, and the Smart Shunt's range maxed out at around 90 to 100 feet. Then I tested the interrupted Bluetooth range by placing the monitor in the battery compartment of a fifth wheel so it was surrounded by electronics which can interfere with the Bluetooth signal, not to mention the walls that were surrounding it. The Smart Shunt's interrupted Bluetooth range maxed out at 30 feet, so that's a pretty significant drop, but still enough to get signal when I was outside of the fifth wheel walking around. I repeated these tests with the BMV712, and its uninterrupted Bluetooth range was over 150 feet, so that's about 50 to 60 feet or more greater than the Smart Shunt. I actually ran out of room to walk it was so far away. And the interrupted Bluetooth range was around 100 feet. So that's a difference of 70 feet when compared to the smart shunt. And that was with the screen inside of the battery compartment, which is definitely not the normal use case for this monitor. And then the Victron monitors have some extra features. One of the main ones being midpoint monitoring, which lets you monitor the voltage difference between connected batteries 
to make sure that they're all operating at around the same voltage. The larger your battery bank is, the more helpful I think this feature is because it helps you better monitor the health of individual batteries. And despite the Ailey and Renogy shunts both having two battery terminals, their manuals make no mention of midpoint monitoring. The extra port on the BMB712 and smart shunt can double as an auxiliary input for a temperature sensor, which is a separate purchase, or as a way to monitor the voltage of a starter battery. And then to finish off the list of these extra features on the Victron monitors, they can both be used as a DC power meter, which I frankly don't think I'll ever use personally. They also have Victron smart networking, so it can kind of work and connect with other Victron devices in your system if you have any. And lastly, the BMV712 has a programmable relay. So after trying out all these monitors and using them in my projects and videos for the last couple months, I have some thoughts. The Ailey monitor is the clear budget option in my mind. It performs the necessary functions of a battery monitor. It tells you the battery percentage, voltage, current. It doesn't have any extra features, but for the price point, I think it's a good buy. The only thing to consider in addition to the sticker price of the monitor is the price of tools you may need to buy, like a hole saw, as well as an extension cord, because the included one connecting the shunt to the screen is pretty short. Side note, there are cheaper options for doing a more sort of jerry-rigged form of battery monitoring, which is covered really well in a video from a channel called All About RVs. I'll add a link in the description to that video if you're on a tighter budget. The Renogy has my favorite screen of the monitors that I tested because it shows you basically everything you need to know at a glance. Current, voltage, wattage, time remaining, state of charge, it's all there. And you get a low capacity alarm, which I think is a pretty nice feature. I don't like how it doesn't have Bluetooth though. I really wish Renogy would add compatibility with one of their Bluetooth modules, which they already make and you can use with a lot of their other devices, because then you'd be able to add Bluetooth for like 40 extra dollars, which I think would make it a pretty great battery monitor. The Smart Shunt is my favorite of these four monitors. One, because it's the easiest to install, which matters to me because I'm constantly setting up and taking down projects for these videos. And it has Bluetooth with decent enough range for my uses, but it doesn't have a screen and it is a little pricier. There is a knockoff version of the Smart Shunt that I've seen on Amazon and I even considered including in this review, but it's been in and out of stock over the last couple months that I've been checking and when I tried to visit the brand's website, it wasn't working. So I didn't feel confident that the monitor would stick around long enough to justify me including it in this review. But I'll leave a link to it in the description if you're curious and wanna check it out. And lastly, the Victron BMV712. It has the screen, it has Bluetooth, and it has a lot of nice extra features. For people with large battery banks and expensive systems, I think it's probably the best option. But for smaller projects and small vehicles, I think it's probably overkill. The Bluetooth range is great. The screen is fine. There are three mounting options, which is nice because it adds flexibility. But yeah, after testing all these monitors, I think that most people won't need the features that this one has and thankfully so because it's quite expensive. Links to everything will be in the description and comments below. Let me know how you liked the video as well. I put a lot of effort into it. Uh, I tested these monitors on and off for a couple months and also it's my longest video by far. So. Just curious to hear what you thought.